Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date, it is a tiny Hornby diesel shunter. Back in 2018, I did a review of this, which is Hornby's 040 version of the Sentinel shunter. And the thing only cost me £45 back in the day, and from what I remember, I was pretty happy with it. But of course, 2018 is quite a long time ago now, and I thought it might be nice to do a fresh review of a more modern version of the Loco. So much more recently, I picked up this, which is the same locomotive, it's the Hornby 040 Sentinel, but it is a much more modern Loco, both in terms of livery and when the model was produced. This is a new release from Hornby in the Hitachi livery, as you can see. Now, I have had quite a shock when it comes to this Loco and the price because the latest price for the 040 Sentinel is shockingly the same as Hornby's much larger, much heavier, and most importantly, new tooled 060 Sentinel. This thing costs the same now, absolutely unbelievable. So £108.99 is the RRP, and they're available from the retailers for just below £198 or in that region. So that is bonkers, isn't it? And I can tell you it didn't feel very good paying more than double what I paid for the, the last 040 Sentinel. But it is what it is. We'll see what this is like. I bought mine from Derails Models, who, as always, offered a great service and packaged the thing up properly for me, which is fantastic. And today we're going to investigate this. We're going to see whether the standards for the 040 Sentinel have changed. Is the performance as good as the old one was? Because my old 040 Sentinel is a fantastic runner, much better even than the 060 version so that will be interesting and more importantly we'll just get to take a look at a newer version of the loco with what looks like quite a complex livery so quite looking forward to that let's get on to this so the first thing you'll notice is unfortunately we've got no sleeve no outer sleeve on this box which means no artwork on the front and the disappointing part is uh, no history of the loco on the back of the box which is a pity isn't it but uh, I can show you the end of the box though. So the product I have here is R30010. It is the Hitachi Sentinel, which is a trademarked term, interestingly. And it is the, uh, no, I'm not going to try and pronounce that because you can get into trouble for that sort of thing these days. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that is the chairman of Hitachi or something like that. It's uh, one of the big wigs at Hitachi and uh, this thing got named after it, as I understand it. Uh, anyway, let's get this straight out then. There's not a lot to see on the box, although I will give you a bit of history on the Sentinels later on, as I always do. Okay. Ah, ah. I apologise. There is a leaflet here with the class history on it. So there we go. It's just not on the box for some strange reason. So if you want to pause it, thankfully you can do and uh, read a bit more about them. There we go. And then let's take a look at the instruction booklet, which I think is one that we will have seen before. So this is the Sentinel class, printed slightly off kilter, as you can see, but never mind. Let's take a look inside. So it is very, very standard. Lubrication, body removal, which is an absolute nightmare on this. In fact, let's take a look, see what it involves. So you've got to turn the locomotive upside down, remove the NEM coupling to reveal a retaining screw, remove screws two and three, turn the locomotive the right way up, ease the side rails from their fixing points at the lower end on the chassis as indicated in red, both sides, and then the rear bonnet should now lift off easily, ease the rear of the main body up, gently pulling forward to disengage the front from the chass chassis lugs. Be careful not to damage the side panels when removing the body. <sighs> Easier said than done. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. The design of this thing is appalling, especially compared with the latest 060 Sentinel where you undo four screws and the body just pops off. Yeah, this thing is a nightmare in comparison. It is a DCC-ready locomotive, and the decoder appears to go underneath the cab detailing. And look, they've even designed a place for the decoder to go, which is more than can be said for the new Sentinel, which just kind of had it floating on the chassis without any proper place for it to go. And then, of course, after all that, you've got to do the reassembly. So, yeah, terrible, terrible design. And then nothing of much interest on the back. And some accessories did drop off the uh, box. So as you can see, this is uh, these are quite complex parts, aren't they? 
So these go in in place of the NEM couplings, but these are much more complex than were on the last Sentinel I looked at. So these, I think, are designed to look like the couplings that in real life allow the Sentinel to couple up to, I think it's the javelins that it shunts around. Uh, more on that in just a second. So that is really cool. That's a great little feature. And presumably they would have had to have tooled these parts specifically for this version of the model. So that's quite impressive. I like that. Okay, let's take a look at the Loco itself then. I'm quite interested to see this livery because I think it's quite a complex one. Right, hang on. It's taped. <laughs> Small delay. Apologies. Is it taped on the other side? No. Okay. Right. First reveal then, here we go, wow. Yeah, this thing looks super cool. I love this modern livery, it's really great. And uh, there are differences between this and the other Sentinel I've got. I mean, the side panels here look uh, a little bit different. So that's interesting. Right, let's take this out and let's see. All right, so it's a nice heavy loco. As always, it's got the sort of die-cast lower body and presumably die-cast chassis as well. But more importantly than that, it just looks awesome, doesn't it? Some really, really great livery application going on with this loco. Very, very modern, but also very, very crisp and precise looking, which is absolutely awesome. So, yeah, I mean, this, let me get the old Sentinel. This couldn't look more different, could it, from the old Sentinel? And uh, you can clearly see the variations in the bodywork as well. So, yeah, I think this is going to be really interesting. We'll take a close look at this Sentinel in just a second. But first of all, as promised, here is a little bit of history on the Sentinels in real life. So you've heard most of this recently, so if you want to skip ahead, feel free. But basically, the Sentinel diesel shunters were built by Sentinel Wagon Works, and they were a multifaceted company who produced lorries, steam locomotives, buses, and for the first time in 1959, diesel shunting locomotives. The first diesel shunter produced by Sentinel was produced in 1959, and after it proved successful, a further 17 were produced over a reasonably short period of time. As the years went on, several modifications and upgrades were made, which included minor variations such as different engines, and also much more major changes such as extra wheels, as we saw last time with the 060 version. The Sentinels were used in several different applications, such as at collieries, dockyards, and quarries. Now, even though some have been retired over the years, some can still be found at heritage railways, but this example was built in 1962 and it's currently used for shunting by Hitachi following its overhaul which happened in 2007. So there she is, the Hornby Hitachi Sentinel up close and personal. And this is an awesome looking model. I actually think this is my favourite Sentinel in the collection. Admittedly, not a brilliant model to be filming against a white background. Maybe I should do the whole review like this. Is that better? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, slight disappointment to start with because I decided I was going to try and fit the alternative coupling, which was presumably developed just for this loco, and I was excited uh, to fit it. Well, yeah, about that, it doesn't fit. <laughs> it will not fit. The coupling hooks just stop it going into place. Now, there is a hole on the alternative coupling for the old coupling hook to fit through, and there's definitely a space there. Uh, for the hook to go into, but the hole is smaller than the hook, so it just does not fit. I think it would fit if you removed the older coupling hook, but I'm not removing some details so that I can fit others. It's just a little bit pointless. So yeah, a little bit of a waste of uh, time and money there, very slightly, but uh, cool idea, just pity it didn't work. Anyway, yeah, it's a great looking loco. It's good quality as well. I mean, this has got the metal handrails, unlike the new and equally priced uh, 060 version of the Sentinel, which has very flimsy plastic ones. So that's an improvement. Man, where do we start? Well, let's start with the decoration because I think that is a really interesting aspect of this loco. So quite a bit of, well, I was gonna say wasp striping. I would say what, ladybird striping. <laughs> It's a bit of a contradiction, isn't it? But uh, yeah, very, very crisp, whatever it is. And then if you are a wasp sort of person, I don't know what that means, uh, but you have got wasp stripes on the buffer beams, which again are a really, really nice print. And then you've got the interesting white body. I mean, man, they must be cleaning this thing all of the time because that is going to show the dirt for sure, isn't it? Uh, and that's got the little sort of modern electric warning signs and such on it, which is cool. And then the cab is separately painted into this quite attractive grey, which has 
just got the Hitachi logo and their catchphrase. And then you've got the uh, the name again, which I, I won't pronounce for political correctness reasons. Uh, and again, no separately fitted etched nameplate available for that, which is a little bit unfortunate. The window frames around the cab, as you can see, they are also painted as well, as is the exhaust in front of the cab, which is painted into the grey. And speaking of the cab detail, I mean, it's still not a very good cab because the cab floor is so unrealistically high and you can notice it from outside of the model. But unlike my Blue Sentinel, this one does have some decoration inside the cab. It's very, very simple, but some of the gauges and such have been picked out which does produce a much more realistic effect from the outside. So that is a great improvement. That is a solid improvement over the old Sentinel, which is great. You've got the steps, which are separately painted, as you can see. And then on the ends, you've got, this is interesting, you've got the Hunslet nameplate rather than the uh, Sentinel logo. Uh, answers on a postcard, if you know why that is. Maybe the Hunslet company, uh, maybe they were the ones who refurbished this in 2007. Don't know, it's quite interesting though. And the same is true on the other grille on the other side. And in fact, behind that grille, you can see we've got that etched piece, which looks really, really good. Great bit of detail, that. So the side panels on this are not actually panels. They're sort of like a, a metal fence. And unfortunately, these are not made of metal. These are an incredibly flimsy plastic. And the really disappointing part is that there are locating holes on the side of the body which are obviously designed for the old panels to fit into, but these really weak fences have not been designed to use those holes, which is really bizarre. I mean, it wouldn't look any less realistic if there was just a part of this fence which poked into that hole, and then it would have more stability. As it is, I mean, the fences don't sit straight because they're so flimsy, and you can see the locating holes anyway. So yeah, again, another strange design choice. So whoever is responsible for the design of these bizarre handrails and also the couplings for the front, yeah, maybe they should go into waitressing or something instead, because this isn't too impressive, folks. The fences do allow you to see some of the detail that goes on behind, though. So again, that contributes to the model looking even more detailed. I've already mentioned the buffer beams briefly, but we don't have any sort of chain link or screw link couplings for the coupling hooks, which is such a pity at this price. This is a very, very expensive loco for how basic it is. And speaking of how basic, yeah, we've got no sprung buffers, as you might expect. And yes, there is a load of paint missing off several of the buffers too. And as far as I can tell, still no lights on the model. The lights are just painted blobs as they were on the, uh, on the new 060 version. But, you know, it's a reasonably well-detailed loco. You've got details such as the wipers on the front of the cab and couple the good level of decoration with the excellent livery and you've got a really, really grand-looking loco, actually. So I don't think this is a good value purchase. I mean, it's not much of a complex loco, is it? And parts of it are very cheaply produced. But it does look fantastic, and really for its size, it's a good weighty loco. It weighs in at 110 grams. I think that's pretty good for a loco of this size. Although do note that that is considerably less than the new 060, new tool Sentinel, and that thing is the same price as this. So not a good value purchase at all, but a great looking loco. Let's get it down onto the track. I'm really interested to see how this performs. Will it perform as well as my old Blue Sentinel? If so, then yeah, this is gonna get a really good mark on performance. So let's have a go. So there she is down onto the track, the new Hornby Hitachi Sentinel, and the first performance test has been recorded, and I will show you that in just a second. For now, though, I'm going to talk a little bit about the mechanism, and to sum it up as briefly as possible, it's not great. Every aspect of the mechanism and its design is far poorer than the new 060 Sentinel, except for one component, and I think it is that one component that allows this loco to be by far the better runner of the two. I have to say though that the design of this loco is so poor and so short-sighted that I do not recommend you disassemble this loco at home for any reason, not for servicing purposes and not for DCC fitting, unless you are really confident with having locos in pieces because it is really not a pleasant process with this one and that there's a high chance of damaging a loco. I'm all for recommending people do stuff themselves, but not with this one unless you're really confident. Anyway, we've got pickups on all four driving wheels, which you might expect, although as you can see, they do sort of bend up into to the body which causes a problem again another reason why you don't want to service this yourself but the base keeper plate is fully removable as you can see 
but there are no bearings on the axles, so that is a pretty poor quality feature. The metal axles go straight onto the metal chassis there. The Loco is also all-wheel drive, which you might consider an overcomplication, but it does mean at least that the coupling rods here aren't actually being relied on to transmit any motion, so maybe that's a good thing. But the biggest problem with this bit of the design is because of the coupling rods and the way they are fitted, you can't remove the wheels from the chassis without removing those coupling rods, which means you cannot clean the pickups. The pickups are not a part of the base keeper plate as they were on the 060 Sentinel, which means in order to clean the pickups and effectively service this loco, you've got to disassemble the, uh, the coupling rods and everything, and they're dead fragile. It's not a good idea to do that. And obviously, because this is an 040 with limited power pickups, Pickups. when those pickups get old and start to get a bit dirty the performance does degrade a little bit and I've had a few really nasty jobs trying to clean the pickups of my old blue sentinel so yeah really really bad design there unfortunately now when it comes to removing the body I've decided I'm going to do this section live for you just to show you how terrible the process really is so I am doing this live because it seems like a truly diabolical process. The truth is I've only ever done this once. I did it once on the first on my old Sentinel uh, when, I, when it came time to service the thing and I have never done it since. I just, I don't bother now. I just take the base keeper off and um, I just, you know, put some oil on the base and sod the motor and everything else. But of course you do have to do this if you want to DCC fit the locomotive. And... Spoiler, it involves tearing some of the details off the model. It's such a diabolical thing. Right, so I'm trying to ease the front coupling out, but it's very tight. I suspect I could even break it. Nope, managed to do it. Because the first body screw is underneath the back coupling. That's fun. And apparently we just have to undo these two screws. So there's this screw, which I think is screw three or something. So that's out, well it's not out, I'll get it in a second, and this one which is screw two. Yeah, I've got that one, can I get this first one? <sighs> Let me get a magnet. Right, got it. Self-tapping screws by the way. Amazing quality from Hornby there. All right, so now is the part that I'm really looking forward to. And that is where I have to prise the handrails from the model. Absolutely diabolical. I am doing this with my instructions. Um, this is not a process I would recommend. So six handrails have to be disconnected here. So, can I do this with my screwdriver? I think they're glued in, you know. Oh, right, so that one's broken. They're glued in. So, you've, oh, that one's not too bad. That one's broken because it, it seemed to be glued in. Let's see if I have any luck with this one. That's a load of the paint come off it. Now, that is, that is truly glued in place. Come on. Oh. So that one's broken as well. I'm hoping that these are just sort of placed vertically in, so I'll be able to pull those out when the body comes off. And this one also seems to be stuck fast with glue. Oh, this is absolutely awful. There we go, I got it. Is that one broken too? No, I think that one's all right. So, yeah, whether I can get those back in or not, I'm not sure. Right, let me consult the Bible for the next step. All right, looks like famous last words. The exact quote is, the rear bonnet should now lift off easily. Easily. Let's see. I can't grab it. Oh, okay. Okay, well, yeah, I, I would say relatively easily. Quite hard to grab it without pulling the details as well, but I think we're okay there. This is a truly Helgen-worthy quality design, isn't it? And then we can ease the rear of the main body up, gently pulling forward to disengage the front of the chassis. Right. And I've got to try and get these handrails to come up as well as I do it. How do we get these handrails up? Because they are literally glued in place. Oh, they came out of the body, okay. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. And then I've got to push it forwards to disengage. All right. Okay, it's off. And 
big surprise. This is not the motor I thought was going to be in here. This looks like a quality five pole motor, folks. Hornby.com says that this is a three pole motor, but I really suspect that this is a good quality five pole motor based on the way it performs. At the very least though, it is a much larger and more substantial motor than I found inside the new 060 version of the Sentinel. And also, would you believe this, there is a proper location for a DCC decoder. The cab lifts up, as you can see, and the decoder socket, for want of a better term, is in the base of the cab. And if you were to fit a six pin decoder here, that would fit nicely into the rear bonnet of the locomotive. So at least this version of the model has a place, a proper place, where the DCC decoder is supposed to sit. And then finally, to finish off, we've got gauging, which came in at 14.2 millimeters back to back across both axles on average, which is about right, slightly under gauge, but that normally produces a good running loco. So there we go, terrible mechanism overall, I would say really poor quality and a really short-sighted design, which makes this incredibly difficult to service. And more importantly for most users, incredibly unintuitive for DCC fitting to the point where there is a real high chance of damaging the model. I mean, a lot of these handrails are not the same having been refitted. You know, they break, the paint breaks off. It's just a really horrible, horrible design. But the performance is the better aspect of this Loco, thanks to that large motor. And now let's jump back in time and show you what happened during the first performance test. Okay, we are ready for the very first test of my new Hitachi Sentinel. Don't forget, the old blue 040 Sentinel that I've got is an absolutely amazing runner. So that's really what we're aiming for with this. Hopefully, the latest Sentinels will be as good as the last ones were. So let's set the controller to forwards. Is the Loco alive without a push? Well, we'll add that little caveat, shall we? Okay, is it? Yes, it works straight away and stopped on the express point. But yeah, they've always done that. That is not gonna be a surprise. Okay, so it's running nice and smooth. How is the speed? So I'm gonna run it past at 50%. There's 50%. It's a very sensible speed and it did not stop on the express points that time. You can't quite see uh, if I bring you across a little bit. Uh, the dead zone is right there. Let's go again. At the high speeds, barely even stuttering. So to say that this is an 040 and not an 060 like the last one, and therefore it has far fewer pickups, two fewer in fact, it's actually performing just as well as the 060 one. So yeah, I don't like the pickup design as much on this one. I know that because of the, uh, the old blue one that I've serviced. But in terms of how effective it is, it seems much more effective. It's going to stop at the slower speeds though. Let's go a bit slower over it. I mean, it's not... Uh, it's not got magical powers or anything, <laughs> but it didn't do bad, did it? I mean, at the higher speed, as it's just running along, it's not gonna be stopping on these points. So that's awesome. Well, let's take it back to a nicer section of track and see what the crawl's like. Okay, so it has not been running yet, and I think that usually will improve a loco like this, but straight out of the box, let's have a look. Is it better than the 0601? That's what I'm interested in. I'm easing it up on the controller. This, it's moving. I'm pretty sure it was moving there. It is moving. This thing is incredible. Look at that. That's even better than my blue one. And worlds better than the newly tooled 060 version. So yeah, this one, it's a little bit less detailed. It's not quite as heavy, it's not quite as large. But it's better quality overall. I mean, we've still got some uh, shoddy quality features, but the performance is miles better. And if this had six wheels, like the 060 version, and therefore more pickups, it would be an absolutely top-notch performer, wouldn't it? It really would, because all of that unreliability over pickups would just literally go away with an extra set of reliable pickups. Yeah, that is really, really good. So it doesn't really need much of a run in because it's running so well, but it's going to get one whether it needs it or not. So here we go, 50%, 30 minutes in each direction. Let's see how it gets on. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely superb. It's, it's a bit faster, I would say. It's definitely speeding up a bit, isn't it? But besides that, just incredible, incredible performance. It's bittersweet though, isn't it? It's, it's a pity that Hornby weren't able to design 
such a good running chassis uh, for their 060 Sentinel. I mean, do let me know if you've got an 0601. Is yours as good as the 0401? Could be that I just got a bad example, but if I did, that's too bad. As far as I'm concerned, in my experience, the 0401, despite its reduced number of pickups, is a much, much better runner. But for this review for today, that is good news because we've got a top-notch performer here. So I'll keep an eye on it. As you can see, it's perfectly reliable, not having any trouble at all on the points and curves. But I will keep an eye on it, and then in an hour's time, we'll carry on, and I'll finish off the review. Wow, what a difference fantastic performance makes. Love it. Okay, see you shortly, folks. Okay, there we go. That is the running in finished. And I've got to say the performance of this thing is absolutely amazing. It is worlds apart from the 0601 that Hornby have produced much more recently. It's crazy to me. It's crazy that the larger and much more spacious 060 Sentinel should have a worse motor and no proper DCC support. It's just why, why would you downgrade a loco like that? And then add the fact that this 040 is so much more reliable than that 060. Yeah, it's just absolutely bonkers. So yeah, incredible performance, really, really good. The pulling power isn't that great, unfortunately. 0.12 Newtons, which is not far off from being half the pulling power of the new 060 Sentinel. So it's not a great hauler. And I've set up actually quite a, a good sized goods train here, uh, which I think will be a real test of its pulling power. I think if it can haul all of that, then we can say the pulling power is at least adequate. But let's have another look at that crawl. I don't think it's going to be much better. I don't see how that's possible, but let's have it again. There we go. I mean, there's no doubt about it that this is a, such a better motor. Three or five pole, I suspect five, but even if it's a three pole, this motor is so much better than on the new 060 Sentinel. Yeah, crazy that Hornby would have downgraded it like that, but uh, it doesn't seem like they care very much anyway, does it? So who's surprised? But yeah, I mean, this is just great. Look at this. This is what I would call a realistic performance from a shunter like this. Um, yeah, really, really, really good. You can do realistic shunting with this, without a doubt. You can really just, you could get two wagons and shunt them together so incredibly slowly with it. Yeah, it's great, real good. And it's got a good range of speed as well. And it's going over the express points there, folks. Let's do that again. I mean, heaven help you when the pickups get dirty and you decide you've got to clean them because <laughs> it's just not going to go well. But look at that, even saved itself at a slow speed like that. The 0601, nowhere near as good as that. Look at that, saved itself again with four wheels. Oh, finally killed it. Oh, well. Right, let's go and couple to that train, shall we? Right, let's couple up to that train. Here we go. Ah, so smooth. Have we done it? Yep. Yeah. All right, can it crawl with a load still? Look at that. Ah, it's just beautifully realistic. Unfortunately, I don't have any sort of javelin Hitachi coaches or anything I can haul with this, so hopefully you don't mind the tankers and the vans. But here we go, let's speed it up. Ah, oh, so smooth and quiet. Look at that, no cutting out. Okay, so this is at 40%, and as you can see, it's getting over the express points without stopping. Momentary cut out, but it saves itself. Absolutely incredible. On that note, let's also set at 40% Hornby's new 060 version of the Sentinel, which is geared very similarly, runs at a similar speed, perhaps a little bit slower. Let's give it some more then, in that case. Let's hook it up to 50, stopped already. Terrible, terrible runner in comparison. In fact, it's gotten a lot worse since I reviewed it, even. So that's the first push. It's now running faster at 50%. Stopped again on the express point. Don't forget, it's got extra pickups. Second push. Yeah, this is, this is Hornby improving, folks. This is Hornby's changing over time. Can't believe it. Yeah, so much worse than in its review. I don't know what's happened. It wasn't long ago, and I haven't used it much since. Absolutely atrocious. I'm gonna ha I haven't done anything about the pickups, to be fair. I need to probably look at those and see if I can adjust them. But out of the box, awful performance. And then on the inside line, I've got my other 040 Sentinel, which all these years on, from 2018 this one was, is still an incredible runner still very good. 
Um, again, horrible thing to service. I think I dismantled this once for a clean and I've just never done it since. <laughs> so yeah, it's not quite as good perhaps as the new one because you know it hasn't had its pickups cleaned for quite a while. But at the moment, it's still good, still decent. So let's catch up with the new Hitachi one and see how it's getting on. So, you know, this is not an amazing model. Several aspects of the design are frankly dumb, but it runs incredibly well. It's a real good runner, as you can see. Um, far better, in fact, than this thing, which Hornby, for some reason, have downgraded. I don't understand their reasoning for that. But yeah, the old 040 Sentinel, because of its motors, more than anything else, I would say, is so much better than this unreliable junk. So I suppose it's quite difficult to decide which one I recommend. I would probably say neither of them. I think there are better shunters available from other manufacturers, quite frankly. Um, the new 0601 is a much better design and you'll have a much better time chipping it, sort of, certainly disassembling it and servicing it. They're both similarly lacklustre in their level of detail, I would say. But the old one, the 0401, is a much better runner. So it's, you know, it really depends on what you look for in a model. To be quite honest, at the new prices, then neither of them are much worth purchasing. Uh, my old one, like I say, my blue one, cost me 45 quid. At that price, it was absolutely fine. I think that was a discounted price, by the way. But even the RRP in 2018, it was far, far cheaper than it is now. Now, it's not so much worth it. You know, they're, they're too poor to justify £100, in my opinion. But uh, if you disagree, do comment down below and let me know. Let's have some ratings then for the Hornby Hitachi 040 Sentinel. And as you can see, the scores are quite mediocre, I suppose, aren't they? So the level of detail gets a three star, which is actually the same as I gave the 060 Sentinel. And I think really the level of detail is more or less about the same because this one has got a painted cab. I think I might have been tempted to drop it down half or even a full star if this one didn't have the painted cab detail, but it does, so I think it's more or less about the same. Not great on the level of detail, a few missing features, sprung buffers for instance is one, and the big one is the missing lights. I think a loco of this price and of this relative simplicity should at the very least have had some lights on it. The performance though is absolutely superb. Given that this is a small wheelbase 040 locomotive, the performance is wonderful. Very, very good crawl, one of the best in fact. And again, to say it's an 040, it does not do a lot of cutting out on points. And in that area, it's much, much better than the new Hornby 060 Sentinel, which is a pants crawler and it constantly cuts out in a very annoying way. So performance is amazing. The pulling power is not so great, it's 11 coaches or 0.12 newtons, which is not far from being just half of that of the 060, so not a great puller, but okay for what it's intended to do, I think. The mechanism then, one of the lowest scores I've ever given, but yeah, it is absolutely awful, the design of this thing. So the pickups are more or less inaccessible, so you can't service and clean them. The disassembly for DCC fitting or motor servicing, absolute nightmare, just really, really nasty design. No proper bearings on the driving wheels and no flywheel on the motor. The only good thing I can say about this is that the motor seems to be very good quality, so the one and a half stars there are almost purely just for that motor, which is the only good aspect of the mechanism. The quality then, I've given four star. I'm trying not to penalise too much again for the mechanism in the quality section. Um, it is a better quality model than the 060 Sentinel because it does have the metal handrails, which makes this model a bit less fragile and a little bit straighter and well assembled looking than the 060. Although it still has one or two flimsy parts and the main reason it loses a star and doesn't get five here is because the quality of the design is quite poor, including the front and back coupling accessories, which just don't don't fit, some of the separately fitted detailing and mainly the body removal and DCC decoder access. Absolutely awful. Value for money then, I've given more or less about the same as I did on the 060 Sentinel. This is a smaller and lighter loco than the 060 Sentinel, but it does work so much better. Performance wise, it is a massive improvement. So yeah, it's not much difference really on the value. Overall then, that is an overall score of 6.67 out of 10. Let's pop that into the ranking. 
and there it is, ninth place, just below the Gladstone and above the 060 Sentinel. Overall, I would say generally this is a slightly worse model than the 060 Sentinel, except the performance is so much better, like worlds apart, and that is why this Loco does slightly better than the 060 in the rankings. So there you have it then folks, overall the 040 Sentinel is pretty similar to the 060 version. There are differences, they're not as similar as you might expect, but overall they are about the same in terms of what sort of quality model we're dealing with here. I have to say though, today it has been a real nice change to have a Loco that just works so incredibly well. So despite all of its other faults, I have thoroughly enjoyed seeing this Loco running so, so good and reliably today. So that I have to commend. Well done Hornby for designing a good shunter all of those years ago. It is a bit disappointing that you seem not to be able to do it today in 2022, but uh, I don't think anyone's too surprised about that. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. I think that is going to be it for the Sentinels for the time being, unless they bring out an 0801 with like a two-pole motor in it or something. Uh, wouldn't put it past them, folks. But uh, until then, that is it for the Sentinels. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. All right, cheers, everybody.